Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Hyde. It's right on the uh, northwest corner of the New Forest, a couple of miles to the east of Fording Bridge and seven or eight miles to the north of Ringwood. Now the parish of Hyde is made up of eight little settlements. Blissford, Stuckton, Frogham, Hyde, Hungerford, Ogdens, North Gawley and Furs Hill. Now the walk today is going to be roughly about five, five and a half miles or so and we're basically going to have a little look at uh, a few of the settlements but predominantly our walk's going to take us through some glorious heathland, some common land, a little bit of woodland and I can promise you one thing, some of the best views in the whole of the New Forest. So do come along with us. Now I'm filming in the middle of July. It's a quite gorgeous sunny morning. It's going to be quite a hot day so we've got plenty of water and we're looking forward to a good walk. <laughs> Let's go. Well I've parked my car just by the cricket pitch in Hyde and I'm starting off the walk by having a quick look at the church which is just behind me here. It's the Church of Holy Ascension. It's uh, built in the mid 19th century so uh, it's not uh, one of the oldest churches in the New Forest and as you can see it's built of red brick with a, a slate roof, nave chancel and a porch on the side there but I love the uh, the double bell cot, some smashing bells up there as well but it really does look quite pretty in the morning sunshine doesn't it? Well before we start the main walk to the south there's a few things I want to show you in Frogham so we're going to head north there first and I'm going to cross the cricket pitch which is just behind me. What a beautiful place to, to play cricket or well, like so many uh, cricket pitches in the New Forest, there's some metal railings protecting the wicket itself, keeping it safe from uh, livestock in the area. Yeah, Hyde Cricket uh, Club, I think have been here since the 1970s and they play in the Hampshire Cricket League. Now I did have a look up to see how they were doing. I think they're bottom of their respective division at the moment. Okay, so we're going to head uh, northwards and it's going to take us through a lovely little piece of heathland. This is the Forester's Arms at Frogham. I don't know too much about uh, the history of uh, the pub, but it is known locally as the Donkey Pub. As normally there are loads of uh, donkeys around here. And uh, oh. <laughs> on cue, I've got a little friend here. And there's a a couple over there as well. Well Frogham has an annual fair usually takes place in June and one of the highlights of the day is the uh, wheelbarrow races. And basically the competitors race in pairs and it's the fastest overall wins but it's not an ordinary wheelbarrow race. Now in the old days uh, you used to actually have to push the wheelbarrow with somebody in the wheelbarrow but uh, health and safety dictates that these days it's just a dummy. I say it's slightly unusual. The start is just here at the bottom of Blissford Hill and the finish line is right up there. It's a 25% gradient. <laughs> I'm going to struggle just walking up there. Oh isn't that quite delightful thatched cottage called Cobweb Cottage and the uh, the roses outside and some poppies there and look up on the roof 
<laughs> with the pheasant and the, the weather vane with the cricketer and stumps at the top. Well, I'm now heading southwards uh, back past over the cricket pitch and we're making our way now to Gawley Common and uh, out onto the main part of the walk. Uh, the Potting Shed Cafe and that should be open by the time we come back. This is on our homeward journey and that'll be our final destination. And this is the edge of Gawley Common. There are a couple of uh, car parks here if you just wanted to come specifically for the common. But looking quite uh, beautiful today. It's a lovely walk. You can do a, a little sort of two mile walk around here if you weren't feeling quite so <laughs> adventurous. But this is uh, looking south and uh, we're going to make our way across the common to those woods on the far side. I've made my way across Gawley Common and now on top of Gawley Hill. There was once an Iron Age hill fort here. Unfortunately there's very little evidence left now. In the 50s and 60s there was a lot of gravel extraction here. There's a, a, a cap of gravel about 10 or 12 foot deep on top of the ridge. It was certainly a good place for a hill fort because uh, just to the west the land drops down into the Avon Valley and you have the River Avon there. So the banking that's just behind me here I think has got more to do with the gravel extraction rather than evidence of any uh, uh, earthworks from the Iron Age. Well just before we come off Gawley Hill just show you a little bit of evidence of the gravel extraction shows you how deep it went and presumably it just became economically unviable to continue. Well, just coming off Gawley Hill now following this little track that's uh, in some lovely shade with some trees on the left. It's perfect to cool us down a little bit and uh, our next destination is a very sweet little brook. Ah, cute little bridge that's going to take us over Huckles Brook. Which, uh, well, it starts its life off um, known as Latchmore Brook, and the source is um, oh, just uh, north of Fritham. In fact, we came across the source on a walk recently, uh, the Iwith Pond Walk. So uh, it works its way through the forest, becomes Huckles Brook around about here and eventually flows out into the River Avon and then out to the sea at Christchurch. And it has this brown tinge to it here and that's really more down to the iron deposits further upstream. And today is definitely a day to make use of a stream to cool down. Just what the doctor ordered I think. I'm not complaining about the heat but uh, it is nice to uh, to get some shade and a little bit of uh, water. <laughs> I think he's enjoying that don't you? <laughs> now any fish in there? That usually is a sign for him to get out. He doesn't like uh, fish tickling him. <laughs> come on. Well I've now come to an important part of the walk if you're going to be following this and doing it yourself. So we've come over the little bridge that goes over Huckles Brook and then turn right along a road. You need to look out then for a sign for a, a children's school. Go up that road at, and it heads towards a, a care home and just before you get to the entrance of the care home you need to look out for the footpath on the left. It's very very easy to miss. So here we are, I say that's the care home on the right as you can see it's very very easy to miss the uh, the footpath on the left but as we're here um, there is a little story about the care home because it was uh, a property that was built by a chap called Hayward Sumner 
and uh, he moved uh, here to it's called Cuckoo Hill when he was in his 40s. He um, was a well-known uh, illustrator, archaeologist and expert on New Forest folklore around about the late 19th century, early 20th century. And indeed, uh, he wrote a book, The Book of Gawley, and it's recently been republished, well, in the 1980s anyway. Uh, I think it was renamed Cuckoo Hill, The Book of Gawley. Fascinating book. It's uh, handwritten, a lot of it, and it includes a lot of um, uh, watercolours as illustrations by Sumner himself. If you're interested in the New Forest, well worth buying it. You can get it off uh, eBay and Amazon, um, and it, it's not that expensive. But it, there's some fascinating stories uh, about life in the New Forest at, um, I say, round about the, uh, the early 1900s. Well, excuse the puffy and panting just making our way up the side of Cuckoo Hill. So I've just left Hayward Sumner House down on the side to my right. I think he died in uh, 1940, but I'm not sure when it became a, a care home. But uh, all this puffy and panting is certainly going to be worth it because when I reach the brow of this hill, the view really is quite stunning. Let me show you. Right, here we go. And this is one of those views that really does take your breath away. Hopefully it's not going to be too glary in the sun, but isn't that a beautiful sight? And that's Chibden Bottom down there. Shame about the telegraph poles, but uh, we will see some, uh, some other views later on without any evidence of man. But it's a beautiful sight. Now we're just going to go a little bit on uphill on the side of the ridge to get an even better view I think. Ah oh, yes I think this is even a better view from here. You can see right at the bottom of the valley looks like a, a stream, a mire, very boggy down there and those little white flowers I'll um, see if I can get a photograph using the zoom lens that's, that's cotton grass uh, because the, the flower head looks like tufts of cotton and it really loves wet ground but just panning round and it's interesting seeing the geology here because water tends to come off the hill to around about the 200 foot level so above 200 foot you have the the heather and it's much more brown but below 200 foot the vegetation much more uh, a, a deeper green color with a lot more of the the bracken and it's where the subsoil changes as well gets away from the gravel and becomes more of a clay base and that's turning around here so hopefully the sun's not going to glare too much. You can also see a lot of the gravel on the, the side here and it's quite white and that's because it's it's bleached um, really for about one or two foot down uh, basically from the the roots of the, the heather on top. It's why you get a lot of places in the new forest that are called white something for example just over the brow of the hill there I think that's Whitefield Plantation and then just looking down in front of me here the purple of the heather I say we're in the middle of July so a couple of weeks time this really will be out in all its glory and the, the bees will be loving it. <laughs> just on the other side of the ridge. Looking ahead there, that's our next destination. That clump of trees in the distance, it's called Robin Hood Clump, and we'll get some cracking views from up there as well. 
and then we'll be heading initially along that ridge and then we'll be following a path downhill there's a little uh, bench halfway down good place to stop and have a rest and then complete the uh, descent and then through the little valley there well we've made it to the top and this is the Robin Hood clump as you can see it's a, a group of 14 trees well 13 plus a, a dead one so 14 sounds better and I believe it was planted in the 1850s I'm not 100% sure about the date but uh, it was the second uh, Earl of Normanton planted them here so that he had a uh, a better view on the uh, skyline uh, from his house at Summerley. Now that, I need to move forward just a little bit where we get some cracking views, we really do. Ah, there we go. I can just see through the trees that Summerley house in the distance and I'll see if I can get a photograph. It might look a bit hazy on the zoom today, but ah. Oh. Yeah, it really does take your breath away. So this is, uh, that's the Whitefield Plantation group of trees. And then slowly panning around. I hopefully this view is coming across well on the GoPro. Now there's a little brick building uh, in the distance there. Now that is a Huff Duff, which is a remnant from the Second World War. And if you want to know more about that, then do check out our video walk at RAF Ibsley because we actually went in there uh, and explored it. And this is back looking across to the uh, to the west. On a day like today, when there's uh, well, hardly a cloud in the sky and glorious sunshine, <laughs> beautiful there. Uh, and there's a lovely breeze up here, which is cooling us down as well. But what a great place! I think we're going to stop here for a little while and uh, just relax. I think. Okay, just to get our bearings again on the walk, we're heading northwards now, and there on the right, that's Furs Hill, I think, uh, which we will be circumnavigating. And just behind a gap through the trees there is Dorridge Hill, and that's where we're heading next. Uh, just circumnavigating Dorridge Hill beautiful in these woods a nice cool breeze coming through and the sun just peeking through the canopy above and all I can hear is my footsteps it's been a fantastic walk this one you know <laughs> I think since Gawley Common I don't think I've seen one other person I saw somebody on horseback in the distance and if you think I'm filming on a Friday just looking at my watch here yeah, half past 11 in July it just shows that there are some parts of the forest that uh, really are quite uh, quiet and peaceful even in the peak periods of the summer. Well, I'm now at the bottom of Dorridge Hill now, I was hoping to take you to the top and to proudly show you a New Forest boundary stone. <laughs> but I couldn't find it, <laughs> so I can't. It's a shame because it should have been easy to find right by the path, but I just searched high and low. There's so much bracken up there, it could have, uh, <laughs> it could have easily been hidden. Anyway, we're going to start heading uh, in a... Um, a sort of westerly direction, very much on the homeward leg now, back to uh, Gawley Common.
Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene back up here on the ridge with these spectacular views. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way, hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And of course, do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. It's been a super walk today. I mean, the, the weather's been glorious, but the scenery has been quite out of this world. We're popping back into the uh, village now for some light refreshments. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Well, folks, we're back at the potting shed where I'm just about to uh, enjoy one of their mini breakfasts. <laughs> and uh, Logan's having a little bonio as well. What a brilliant way to end the walk. <laughs> All right, you fancy a bit of sausage? <laughs> I don't want you to feel left out. <laughs>